Right on. I'd love to hit on this aspect real quick. How do you guys um, handle decision making as a couple? Let's say Quentin has peace about it, but you don't. And it's like, how can a, a marriage uh, kind of, I don't know. It's like my husband has peace, but the wife doesn't. It's like, what do you do? Yeah, no, that's so good. Ooh. I, we get, you know, it's awesome that you asked that because we actually get this question a lot. Yeah. And I, and I think... I'm your host, Brandon Windsor, and today is a very special day. Why? Because it's today. And speaking of today, it is time for Sippin' All. So if you guys have your mugs, get them ready, put them up in the air. Here we go. Three, two, one. Thank you, Lord, for the day that he has made for you and me. Uno, dos, tres. Ah, guys, we have some amazing guests. Yes, you heard me right. Guests, plural. And we have the directors of Youth of the Nations, Pastor Quentin and Aubriana Carter. I want to quickly read to you what uh, Youth of the Nations is. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Youth of the Nations is a 30-plus year legacy of the next generation radically encountering the presence of God. Youth of the Nation began in 1990 and to this day has become the largest spirit-filled summer camp in southern United States. Youth for the Nations is more than just a camp. It's a movement that impacts over 5,000 students, pastors, and leaders every single year. Through various different means, Youth for the Nations resources, equips, and influence youth's culture. Excuse me. Um, Youth for the Nation Summer Camp, Youth for the Nation Conference, Youth for the Nation Network for Pastors and Leaders, and Worship, and so much more. I'll put the link in the description to their website below if you guys are interested. But I had the pleasure of sitting under these two pastors as, as they ministered in Conroe, Texas. And guys, they are anointed and appointed, so I had to reach out to them and praise God. They answered, and so I got to spend uh, an hour with them. So today we'll have that first 30 minutes of our time together. It was simply powerful. So guys, I hope you guys enjoy my time with Pastors Quentin and Abriana Carter. All right. Well, hello, Pastor, Mr. and Mrs. Carter. How are you guys doing? Good. good. How are you? I'm doing so good, man. I, I love this God connection that was birthed at um, in Conroe, Texas. And so I got to meet uh, Mr. and Mrs. Carter uh, during Encounter Weekend in Conroe, Texas at Harvest Family. Um, I love Pastor Stu. And, uh, but yeah, why don't you guys go ahead and briefly share what you guys do and the organization you're a part of? Sure thing. Yeah. So um, we are the directors of Youth for the Nations, which is based out of Christ for the Nations Institute in Dallas, Texas. Right and on. so um, Christ for the Nations has been around for over 75 years. Youth for the Nations launched in 1990 for the next generation. So we really represent the youth arm cool. of CFNI. And uh, it started in 1990 as a uh, youth camp that really became a movement. Um, to where to this day, we've reached 110,000 teenagers, pastors, leaders wow. for the gospel. Um, every summer, we get to host about 5,000 teenagers, pastors, and leaders. So that's what we're looking at this upcoming summer. So yeah, with all the ripping and running, man, we're getting ready. We've got 4,800 registered right now. And Whoa. we see we see crazy breakthrough, man. Um, God removing scars, cutting scars. We've seen scoliosis. Yeah healed, dyslexia healed, colorblindness healed. And so it's really beautiful being able to steward um, just a move of what the Holy Spirit is doing in this next generation. And uh, we're, we're so honored. But babe, you can yeah. tell them a little bit about ministry experience. Yeah. So um, Quentin and I um, have been in ministry, I would say, for over 15 years. Um, both of us got saved as teenagers. I got saved at 14. So I was a freshman in high school. And Quentin got saved at 18, so at the end of his high school career, oh. and we um, we came to Alabama. He was actually living in Georgia at the time. I came from Arizona, had a call of God in my life since I was 16 years old, and so I knew that I wanted to be a pastor. I knew that I wanted to be in youth ministry, 
um, since then, since I was 16. And so, yeah, God brought us on a journey. And so we took five years and being in Birmingham, but really traveling all over with a, an evangelist named Pat Chatsline. We were with him for five years, um, not only being students, but also being in ministry yeah. and directing the school of ministry. And then we transitioned to be, um, youth pastors, um, wow. in Texas. Yes. Yeah, cool. We were doing that for nine we years. We did that for nine years. And so, loved our home. We loved being there. It was amazing. And then God set us on a journey really in 2022. Um, it was our last year. We felt it was going to be our last year as youth pastors locally at a church mm -hmm. um, because God was going to, God was stirring in us something different, something new. We know we had more in us. And then um, summer 2022 came, we came here for the first week of YFN. Like we always did, you know, kind of the same grind as youth pastors that yeah. we go through. Yeah. And then we got this incredible uh, question that was like, would you consider being YFN directors? Which, you know, at the time we were kind of like, uh, okay, what? You know, yeah. it, was thoroughly, it was thoroughly a curveball. Yeah. We weren't expecting. Yeah. We just knew that God was already moving some fresh dreams in our hearts, transition yeah, yeah. different things. And, um, and yeah, it just kind of landed. It was the Lord, all yeah. all the Lord. He aligned everything very strategic, and yeah. that's the season we're in right now. We love serving the next generation, pastors, leaders, yeah. churches, regions. It's beautiful. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So I'd love to kind of hit on that for a second. So when it comes to making a big decision like that, or uh, transitioning from season to season, um, how can people be aware that it's God, and how can people be aware that it's just like a natural thing, or maybe even just like, even though it looks like a good opportunity, it's not the Lord and we should not walk through that door. How can we? Oh, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's such a good question because not everything that looks good is God. Mm, yeah. You know, we had a lot of, um, other opportunities thrown our way Yeah. that, so we were youth pastoring in the same space for nine years and in youth ministry terms, you know, if you've been faithful for two years, churches are trying to hire you, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, other churches are reaching out. Hey, this guy doesn't leave, you know, this couple, they stay in, so yeah. let's hire them, you know? And so we had a lot of different options and things going our way, but we knew the Lord told us in kept calling us and leading us where we were. Mm -hmm. um, but there were a lot of good opportunities. Look, massive, uh, unbelievable, um, just, yeah, impact, reach, influence. Um, and we had to really weigh each one. Mm, one yeah. of the things that I would encourage if anyone's ever processing through a transition or is this the Lord is fasting and prayer. Um, that is really what's guarded us from jumping into things that we should praise the Lord. We never jumped into. Yeah. Um, and so even when we were coming here, we heard about it and got it offered to us in June, the beginning of June, we took the rest of the month of June to fast and pray. Um, so it wasn't even until July that we felt a peace and a confirmation and like a word in our spirit of go. Mm -hmm. uh, and so waiting for that, don't move into another door off of a good idea. You have to have a word. You have to have a, a, a yes in your spirit because that yes has to carry you beyond people's opinions. Right. You know, that yes in has your to, own feelings. yeah, when, yeah. The, when you feel it, when you don't feel it, yeah. that yes got to carry you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, and I would say we, a, a part of the transition, having other voices in your life, um, mm -hmm. specifically the ones that mentor you, specifically the ones that you call pastor. Um, the beautiful thing about our transition was that we, our pastor that we served at um, in Houston, he it was a father, which is very rare um, in ministry cases yeah, that wow. you have fathers who are the people that you work under become your yeah. father. And so yeah. he was a father to us. So we invited him into the space of please be praying for us because we are thinking about transitioning. And, you know, years before, prior to that, prior to us going to YFN, we had another opportunity come up and mm -hmm. we invited him to the space before. And he was like, you know, I really don't feel like this is the Lord. And we were like, wow. okay, so much, but we're going to still pray about it. And then we finally got the, yeah, this 
isn't the Lord, you yeah. know? So yeah. having, having trusted leaders um, in your life really speak high value. And I remember one of them told me, I was having a conversation with her um, outside of Quentin and I having conversations together. And she had told me, she's like, you know, you have been intentional about praying and fasting about this opportunity. You mm. will know when it's God, you yeah. will yeah. know. And it might seem scary and it might seem like, where did this come from? But you'll know it's God. And the moment that they had asked us to come to YFN, I was like, I was crying. I was actually weeping a little bit because I was like, I think this is it. Like, I think mm. this is the moment where our life is about to completely change. And, and it did, and it was beautiful. And it's been nothing but, um, uh, it, it has been hard, but there's been so much fruit. And I believe that when you step into a new thing, um, and the grace of God carries you, but I, I yeah. believe that anointing, um, and what God's, uh, called you to step into you becomes very, it's easier than normal, right? It there's fruit, there's, um, an ease to decisions. There's there things just work together. Right. And yeah. that's that scripture. All things work together for the good yeah. of those who love and are called according to his purpose. And so I just believe like that was, ha that's been happening for us since we've been here and transition isn't always without its trials, right? right. It's yeah, not yeah, always, yeah. Without, it's, things that come with life, you know, but the, the, without a doubt, it has been such evident presence of God, grace of God, um, that, and just fruit from us just being David's in our field for, for nine years. So right on, I'd love to hit on this aspect real quick. How do you guys, um, handle decision-making as a couple? Let's say Quentin has peace about it, but you don't. And it's like, how can a, a marriage uh, kind of, I don't know. It's like my husband has peace, but the wife doesn't. It's like, what do you do? Yeah, no, that's so good. Woo! I, we get, you know, it's awesome that you asked that because we actually get this question a lot. Yeah. And right Hey guys, I wanted to stop real quick and say, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I want to challenge you with something. If you know someone in your life that you know that they would like this episode, stop what you're doing and send it their way so that we can keep growing the sip and all family. All right. Thank you for sharing. And let's get back to the episode. I, and I think we walk through it yeah. in many ways. In yeah. Many so I would say we never fully make a decision um, without both of us being in the same page. Yes. Good. Um, because uh, so what happens is, you know, sometimes I'll be so super excited. I'm the type that's excited about everything. Like I want to do it all. I want to, I want to jump head first. Let's yeah. just, let's yeah. just put trip let's just go and do that let's just yeah. bring that person on the team like i'm like love them you know and quentin's like oh let's let's wait let's pray you know and i'm like and then sometimes it's vice versa right yeah. and so we will take time and literal time and it could be days it could be weeks um for us to really go okay god what do you what do you want us to do and what do you want us to say and i believe though that especially if the lord spoke to one of us specifically that the other eventually um giving them space and time to really pray mm -hmm. will we will eventually come to an agreement yeah. um and 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 then proceed there and we actually after we decide, we actually touch and agree and we pray. Right. Um, just right we believe in the power of touching and agreeing and and that God is gonna gonna do it or go before us as we make that decision. So yeah. we definitely um even if the one like I'm definitely the impulsive in our marriage. So even in my impulsivity and my excitement, I absolutely trust in his leadership and and as my mm -hmm. husband. And so we will, yeah. you know. But yeah. and now on the other side of that, it's been a process of um, me becoming more of a man and as a husband that I can be trustworthy, mm -hmm. you know, because there obviously marriage starts off that you both trust each other. You right. know, that's why you're getting married. Like, I trust you with my life. Um, but at the same time, you know, when I first got married, which was 20 how old was I? 23? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at 23, you know, who I was, even though, yes, I, I am fully being responsible for my wife. I still had so much growth to happen. So oh, much yeah. growth. As a leader. And, um, and yeah, there's seasons where 
uh, I didn't make the best decisions. There are seasons right. where I definitely got ahead or, you know, I pulled the trigger and she was not on the same page. And we had to learn that. I had to learn that. Yeah. The greatest thing I've learned, though, in what I've really found in our marriage is trusting her voice and always trust one another's voice in each other's decisions. Uh, um, man, I, uh, I, I could get emotional right now because there's so much that uh, wisdom in, in her. And so as you get married, finding that wisdom in your spouse that God's really put there, if you take the time to humble yourself and hear them mm. versus go in what you feel like, you know, um, man, it's just, it's such a beautiful thing. And then there's times where we jump, where we really don't know at all. You know, we really aren't sure if this is going to work. We're not sure we, we, we're we going to make an intense financial decision or something like that. Yeah. And we jump. And it's yeah. so fun to jump together. Um, and you learn together for sure. Um, but I would say we've now grown to where we're always on the same page. Um, I'm not making a decision if she's not aware. She's not making a decision that I'm not aware of. But we're that that's not a fear thing. Like you can't do anything without me, you know, type thing. Right. It's more of a agreement because we're going to back each other. Yeah. You know, if if she made a decision, for example, there was a while ago, she wanted to invest in uh, uh, growing in, in marketing. And so yeah. we agree that, OK, we're going to put financially money towards her being able to get a um uh, uh, a marketing certificate. Yeah, a marketing yeah. certificate through a process. That's what we're agreeing on. That wasn't a rash decision. We both moved towards that, or vice versa. So it paid off too. Yeah, we because that's awesome. Money, you know, <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Come through and different things. So, um, but again, honoring each other, hearing each other's voice, and honoring the voice that God's putting on the inside of both of you. Um, that's what's really helped us in our marriage. That's really good. This might be a super deep question, but what happens when God tells you to do something and you don't do it? Ooh. <laughs> Next time on Sipping All. Such spiritual warfare. And I believe that it's so important that your emotions and your spiritual life with the Lord is in in check and in alignment with him because um there is a breakdown that can happen right and it's a burnout that can happen and i think that when you um when you take time to be intentional yes. when you take time to step away when you take time to be okay that you don't have to be the leader um and that you don't have to be the one to call the shots and that you are okay with not being the man or woman of god that leads the youth ministry I believe that you can have a longevity in, in it. Um.